Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I want to share with you the book, I Contain Multitudes, by Ed Yong. The author is a science journalist at The Atlantic Magazine. He is renowned for his excellent biomedical reporting and science communication work. In 2016, he received the Michael E. DeBakey Journalism Award and Byron H. Waxman Award respectively. This book uses abundant scientific research cases to re-examine the relationship between humans and microorganisms, bringing us many insights. I believe everyone has had this experience that more and more children nowadays have allergies, for example, allergies to pollen, peanut butter, etc. Many children also suffer from asthma at a very young age. Why are children more likely to develop allergies now? This is actually closely related to microorganisms. There is a theory called the hygiene hypothesis in scientific research. It argues that it is precisely because hygiene conditions have improved dramatically in the past 50 years, which significantly reduces children's exposure to microorganisms. As a result, children become more sensitive to microorganisms and more prone to allergies. So why do problems increase when exposure to microorganisms decreases? This book, I Contain Multitudes, provides a good explanation. In fact, the relationship between humans and microorganisms is not simply hostile. There is more symbiosis. We used to think that microorganisms would cause diseases and were harmful. This is actually a misunderstanding. The microorganisms that cause diseases are only a tiny minority. Most microorganisms coexist peacefully with humans, some even in mutualistic relationships. If we disrupt the balance with microorganisms, problems will ensue. First of all, microorganisms and humans have an inseparable symbiotic relationship. This can be seen from the experiments with germ-free mice. Scientists raised mice in a sterile environment. These mice looked no different from ordinary mice externally. However, after dissection, it was discovered that their gastrointestinal development was not very healthy, indicating that microorganisms play an important role in the growth and development of mice. Further research has shown that some microorganisms in mice can regulate and activate the genes of mice to help them develop a healthy gastrointestinal system. Looking at the example of human breastfeeding can also demonstrate the symbiotic relationship between microorganisms and humans. Breast milk contains abundant human milk oligosaccharides, also known as HMOs. Scientists originally thought they existed to provide nutrition to infants. It turned out that infants cannot digest or absorb these HMOs at all. They go directly into the infant's colon and are absorbed by specific microbiota in the intestines as food. In other words, the HMOs in breast milk are specifically for feeding the microbiota in the infant's body. After these microbiota feed on HMOs, some chemicals are generated. These chemicals can help the development of the infant's intestines. Therefore, the purpose of humans evolving abundant HMOs is to nurture specific microbiota in the infant's body. These microbiota in turn help the infant grow. These two examples show that microorganisms and humans have a symbiotic relationship that is inseparable. Now that there are so many microorganisms in the human body, where are they mainly concentrated? This question leads us to the second part when want to talk about the importance of gut microbiota to human health. In the human body, microorganisms are most concentrated in the gastrointestinal tract. The microbiota in the gut not only affects development during infancy, but also impacts adults' health. First, the gut microbiota can help regulate the human immune system. The immune system is like a thermostat at home that needs to be kept at the right level neither too high nor too low. Some common microbiota and their surface substances in the intestines can help the immune system maintain a stable state, without overreaction or negligence. Second, the gut microbiota also affects a person's body type, whether obese or thin. Scientists have extracted obesity causing microbiota from obese mice and transplanted them into germ-free mice. The latter quickly became obese. Conversely, transplanting the microbiota of thin mice into obese mice can also help them lose weight. However, merely adjusting the microbiota is not enough. Diet is also very important. 
If you continue to take in a lot of oily food as usual, the effect of transplanting thin microbiota will be compromised. Only with a healthy high-fiber diet can the thin microbiota exert the greatest effect. So, the gut microbiota can have a significant impact on body weight. Finally, I want to give everyone a brand new perspective to understand human diseases. That is to look at the occurrence of diseases from the perspective of ecological balance, rather than the simple perspective of bacteria. Imbalances in natural ecosystems often lead to environmental problems. This is very similar to human ecological imbalances that lead to diseases. Similarly, reduced biodiversity also undermines ecological balance. Reduced diversity of human microbiota can also lead to health problems. We think many diseases are caused by a single microorganism, but this is not the case. Most diseases are actually the result of an overall change in the human microbiota, leading to ecological imbalances. We call this microbiota dysbiosis. For example, the cause of gastroenteritis is not a single pathogenic bacterium, but the result of multiple factors, including genes, viral infections, immune dysfunction, environmental pollution, and so on. Eventually, it leads to overall changes in the intestinal microbiota and enters a diseased state. From the perspective of biodiversity, the extinction of a large number of organisms in nature directly threatens diversity. Similarly, the use of antibiotics in recent years has caused a large number of human microbiota to be on the verge of extinction, which also reduces microbiota diversity, and is therefore more likely to cause ecological imbalances. Therefore, we must realize that diseases often originate from microbiota dysbiosis, rather than a single pathogenic microorganism. If we can look at problems from the perspective of ecological balance, there will be new understanding of disease prevention and treatment. If you want to gain deeper insights into the mysteries of human microbiota, I highly recommend reading this book. It not only imparts knowledge, but also provides you with a whole new worldview and philosophy of life. Well, thanks for watching, see you next time.